There was a survey done recently in the podcast industry looking at different podcast formats and which were most effective for growing an audience. The interview format was the worst at growing your audience. I think it's really important work. The survey was done very well and there's no doubt that those are accurate numbers. But it's more about how interviews are being done than really whether the interview format is effective. Here's what I mean. The most popular podcast in the world and most popular by a mile is an interview based podcast and it's three hours long. So it can't be the format. It has to be something else. As someone who worked in television for a decade, I used to host morning shows and those were three hours long and it's all interviews pretty much. I once sat down and tried to crunch out roughly how many interviews would I have done throughout my career. And the number I came to was about 11,000 interviews. So that's how I, I come to this level of understanding about what makes an effective interview. And I want to share that with you. Let's take the story of Little Red Riding Hood. And let's say that story has made news headlines and people understand the story and they understand the issue that Red was facing. On your podcast, you have the opportunity to interview Little Red. How would you go about developing the questions for that interview? For the sake of simplicity, let's just go with four questions that you're going to kind of pre-design on what you want to talk to Little Red about. You'll have a conversation with Little Red, of course, but these are the questions that you think of in advance. And let's be honest, most of us are using generative AI in some way, shape, or form to help kick off those questions. Here are four possible questions that you might ask Little Red. These make sense. And when I first went into ChatGPT and said, okay, give me some questions that I'm going to ask Little Red Riding Hood because I'm going to interview her on my podcast, these were the exact questions that came up. Not bad. There's actually nothing wrong with any of these questions. But what I want you to do is take these and develop them into a story arc. The human brain thinks in stories. So begin at the beginning, introduce the challenge or what has to be overcome, and then the denouement. How was it resolved and, and where does it lie right now? These are different simply because they follow a story arc. There's a beginning with an initial challenge that has to be overcome, and then there's that face-to-face -face climactic moment. This story process will keep people listening right through to the end. Some other ideas, ask open-ended questions. Instead of asking Little Red, what did it feel like to come face to face with the wolf? I might simply say, you're there at your grandmother's bedside. You're there to see your grandmother. And when you look in her face, that's not her. Now there's no question there. But I'm leaving that empty space. It's an open-ended question. And assuming Little Red is, is very well-spoken, an, an adult-level speaker, she's going to chime in and pick it up from there. Leave those open-ended questions. Make sure your questions tap into emotions strongly. Emotions are so powerful. And again, it helps with memory. And one last idea. At the end of your interview, thank your guest. And don't close off the episode. Cut the episode then run the transcript through generative AI and ask it to highlight the top three things that you got from the guest that make that your closing paragraph. Here are the top three things that I got from Little Red Riding Hood today in this interview. One, two, and three. And this just follows the classic format of tell them what you're going to tell them, tell them, and tell them what you told them. And again, that keeps people listening right through to the end and it summarizes things for them at the end. Thanks for watching this full video. Do me a favor, hit subscribe and follow this channel for more great podcast tips.